Hey guys, I'm Jonathan Baker. We are in a garage in Atlanta, Georgia. This garage though is actually interesting for a couple reasons. One, we're starting a craft brewery in this garage. I know, pretty humble beginnings. And two, there's an elevator. So I'll actually catch up with you guys on the second floor. Boop! Here we are. And actually, Jeff, hey, you're here with me. Dude. I am. This is Jeff's house. Yeah, humble beginnings. And, <laughs> and you heard that. I did. Uh, sorry, I, did. I thought the first floor was a little kind of... Yeah, there's the, the ceilings are very thin. Very thin. Paper thin. Paper thin. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. I thought I would give Jeff a cameo, Yeah. but it's actually not working out. Right. So do you mind? Stage left? Stage that way, yeah. yeah that's, that's okay. That's great, thanks. Uh, so, okay. For over three and a half years, I've been marketing beer, talking to people about beer, brewing beer, and most of all, drinking beer. I love beer. I've spoken at conferences on the subject of beer. I write a column for Beer Connoisseur Magazine. I write our company website, MondayNightBrewing.com, which has actually become far more popular than it deserves in craft beer circles. And I've interviewed brewmasters all over the country. So we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia only has four microbreweries at the moment, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to start a microbrewery here. But what Atlanta lacks for in quantity, it makes up for in quality. So I'd actually love to take you to a couple of my favorite craft beer spots here. First, we're going to go to Atlanta Brewing Company, which is actually a brewery a couple miles from here. After that, we're going to hit up Hop City, a craft beer specialty store, and that'll be it. Let's do this! So we're on our way to Atlanta Brewing Company. Uh, it's actually Atlanta's oldest microbrewery. The brewmaster there has agreed to open up his doors and, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about malted barley, which, as you may know, is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, it'll actually be one of your favorite subjects too after we talk to him. Yeah. So, so you're telling me the difference between a pale ale and a stout is mm -hmm. just kind of the percentage of the darker malts and the lighter malts that you're pulling in. Yeah, exactly. No, no, this, this dark malt would be the this is the far end of the spectrum, right. okay? So imagine this very light malt and this dark malt and then all different kinds of roast in between. Yeah. Basically like, like setting your melting pot of America. Setting your toaster on one and this being <laughs> one and this being ten and all the colors in between. And this would be bad burnt toast. That's that that that's bad burnt toast, but it's but good burnt beer. Good burnt malt beer. is what it is, yeah. <laughs> and what is this? Can you taste it? Oh yeah, yeah, you can eat it. You know, and a malt like this will give you like coffee flavors, chocolatey yeah. flavors. Okay. I could actually, I could eat a lot of that. Eat it for breakfast. Yeah. And this one's a little lighter. Yeah. It tastes just slightly better than grape nuts. Right, right. You know, that that that, that that's really common here. It's like this is like grape nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So in this spectrum, mm -hmm. how many malts do you guys work? Uh, we'll use, uh, well, 10, 12 different malts, um, uh, one of our beers will use up to 8 different malts at one time. In one beer? In one beer. Um, uh, some of our beers only use 2 malts, and then we'll make, uh, we'll use other beers where we'll have to bring in other malts from the outside. We'll bring in, uh, these are American malts, we'll bring in uh, German malts, we'll bring in uh, Belgian malts mm -hmm. uh, for the different beers that we make. So from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, we're at Hop City in Atlanta, Georgia. It's one of Atlanta's finest craft beer stores. You can see the rows of beer just beckoning. Uh, also beckoning is the owner, Craig, who said he would talk with us. So we're going to go inside and check it out. We make sure our lighting is incandescent, not fluorescent. Okay. Correct. Although it hasn't fully been proven, the belief is that fluorescent, the rays from fluorescent light will actually degrade your beer faster than incandescent. Okay. Excellent. And what do you do with temperature? Temperature is also very important. Your yeast, um, for as you, you know from, from your brewing experience, yeah. ale yeast is really comfortable at 70 degrees. Okay. So we keep... So that's about all that's yeah. what this is now, room temperature. Correct. We, we keep the store no higher than 70 degrees, winter or summer. And okay. it's not because I'm, you know, more blooded. It's simply because the, <laughs> the beer likes 70 degrees. So. Uh, Craig is very finicky about his temperatures. Right. I am. And so, and when the store is closed, is the temperature still 70 degrees? It actually, yeah, it drops down. Uh, okay. 
Colder temperatures are a problem, okay. so it, uh, it, especially now in the winter, we do drop it down into the, the mid 60s in the evening. Okay. Um, but it, during the daytime, it never gets higher than 70. Oh, so okay, so you don't want it to get higher than 70. Correct. Okay. Lower temperatures, not a problem. Right. Higher temperatures, very much not a problem. Because I, I was going to say, I think so there's lower temperatures in the fridges back there. Yeah. Yeah. Lower lower temperatures are not a problem. <laughs> um, excellent. And. And you also organize your beer a little differently here, I've noticed. We do. Here at Hop City, we treat our beers much more like a, a good wine shop treats their wine. So, so everything's organized by style. Okay. Uh, we want our IPAs and an IPA out, for instance, and a pale ale and the pale and IPA out. What, and what's kind of the benefit of doing that? Like me, Joe, consumer, I'm walking in, I see an IPA aisle. We'd like to think that um, having all the beers organized by style gives you a choice. Okay. Your, your biggest decision when you walk into Hop City is not what brand do I want to purchase. Instead, it's what style of beer am I in the mood for today. Or better yet, if I'm pairing with a food, what kind of food am I having for dinner? And therefore, I can help better select an aisle to shop in. So uh, you're faced with, yes, 80 to 100 decisions on each aisle, all within a specific style. But that's a good kind of choice, not a bad kind of choice. <laughs> I mean, any, any choice that involves beer is a good choice. Agreed. In my opinion. <laughs> uh, speaking of choices, uh, those double entendres always get me. <laughs> White snake. <laughs> um, I just like the duck rabbit name. I like the I name of the, and I like the logo because it's like, is it a duck or a rabbit? I don't have any kind, but I'll give you a bile. What is this? It's bile. That sounds terrible. Doesn't it? You wonder why I don't buy it. I'm thinking to myself. I can't sell that. Have you had it? I have. It's not, it's not terrible. You're going to give this to me? Yeah, it's yours. Thanks, I think. Add to the collection. Yeah. <laughs> For future, you know, as one friend to another, don't name your beer that. <laughs> All right, so we're back from our little tour of Atlanta's craft beer scene. Craig actually left me with a bottle of Obalon Bile. So I'm going to try this, and I'm hoping that it tastes better than it sounds. Cheers.